What is going on, YouTube? I have the BMW F900R once again. So that's where I can find out what it's like to own this thing. So consider this video an ownership experience video. So I just came back from eating some lunch. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't record any of that stuff because I was super hungry. All I could think about was food. So I got done eating lunch. I parked it. And now as part of an ownership experience, when you park a motorcycle, either you keep looking back at it, or you forget that it's there. And I found myself looking back at it all the time, because it's, it's just such a nice looking bike. I could, I could imagine myself owning one of these babies. Not only that, but as soon as I walked in the door, there was this old man along with, this, uh, with a little kid, I think he was it's probably his grandson, complimented the bike as well. So as part of an ownership experience, this is something that I'm probably going to have to get used to. People are going to have to, people are going to ask about the bike and people are going to talk about it. Compliments and everything like that. So it's a very, very nice looking bike. And uh, as part of the ownership experience, I got to experience that firsthand just today. Riding around town on this bike, it's pretty comfortable. At first when I got this bike last week, I mentioned several things about its weight, like, you know, being 465 pounds. But honestly, like now that I'm riding the bike, I don't even notice the weight that much. I've become accustomed to it. So it doesn't take very long for you to get used to this bike. Once it's moving, you hardly feel the weight. And uh, the seat seems to be at a good height for me as well. I, I also had a consideration on changing the seat size from, I think uh, the default seat on this bike, a motorcycle is 32 inches. So I was considering if I order one of these for myself, to get the uh, the 30 inch one but I feel pretty comfortable with the 32 inch one I'm not flat footed or anything like that and I don't think uh, I'll, I'll ever be flat footed on a 32 unless I grow some taller legs or put some platforms on <laughs> but uh, that being said there is a 30 inch option and I could probably be a lot more comfortable with that but I'm just a little worried that there's gonna be less padding on that seat so I'll be uncomfortable riding the motorcycle so we're currently in a town called La Jolla. It's, uh, it's my hometown. I like this area a lot. And I usually start from this area here, go up the coast. And it's very scenic. It's a very nice scenic road. So riding this bike in my own hometown gives me a better feeling of how it would be if I own one myself. I get to feel the roads because on my own bike, I have a 959 as you already know. I feel the road all the time, so it's nice to ride something different so I can feel the road to see what difference it makes riding something upright and a lot more comfortable than my Panigale. And the comfort aspect is definitely there. It's a lot more comfortable and it's something that I can ride and come back home with my bones still intact. <laughs> For anybody who owns a Panigale, you know what I'm talking about now. Come on. <laughs> and if you don't, Hey, I give you props because if you can ride a Pentagali for like more than two hours and not feel tired, I give you special props. We're going to ride the bike for a little bit and then we're going to pull over and I'm going to demonstrate for you all the different menus that the system has because now that I added my phone, I got some other menus that are opened up. There's also a navigation, gives you turn by turn directions, which is pretty awesome. I haven't tried any of that stuff yet, but I just want to ride the bike first, get a feel for it, talk a little bit about it, and then once we stop somewhere, perhaps once we get to our destination, because I want to go all the way to Carlsbad, I'm going to take the local routes, Highway 101, go to all, all the way to Carlsbad, maybe stop by for some coffee, uh, obviously everything is outdoors these days, so I'll just grab some coffee, find a seat if I can, if not, I'll stand up and just admire the bike and see how I feel about it because uh, these are nice bumpy roads. And when I say nice, I'm look, I, I want the bumpy roads because I want to know what this bike feels like and so far so good. So I, I, I want to be able to do the things that I normally do with this bike on a day-to-day -day basis. Just, you know, cruising around here and there. Uh, other than that, I, I do want to take long road trips on this bike as well. Like, uh, as you know, I, I do reviews for bikes. And although I have two vehicles, I got a BMW, which is my daily rider, and I have my Porsche, which is, you know, my weekend warrior. I, uh, and, huh, weekend warrior. Yeah, I ride that thing every freaking day. <laughs> but, you know, I, I do have two vehicles, and I have the Panigale. 
But the Panigale and the Porsche are strictly toys, you know, they're just like, they're, they're stress relief for me. I get on that thing and I punch it and all my worries are washed away and I, you know, I, I go to Mexico and I have tons of fun in Mexico and then I drive back home. And uh, yeah, so I have plenty of fun with those two, but uh, the BMW is my daily driver and something like this I'm assuming is going to be similar to having a daily rider because it's very upright, it's very comfortable, it's got uh, some creature comforts built into the dash here so you got navigation, you got trip computer, you got an app. I mean this is just out of this world. I mean I, I started riding a motorcycle less than a year ago and uh, before starting to ride a motorcycle less than a year ago, I would have never imagined the million years that technology like this exists or will exist someday. So it's profound. Uh, I never thought that motorcycles were this technologically advanced. But, you know, in, in between my legs, I have a BMW. And a BMW is going to provide a premium experience for the rider. So I've become accustomed to that because I have my BMW 335 right now. It's got a nice built-in dash, but it's an outdated BMW model. It's a 2014 335. The newer models have the same exact font scheme as this BMW motorcycle. So it sits right at home and I'm pretty comfortable using it because it's, it's, it's very, very user-friendly and I'm pretty much used to the fonts and styles and menu systems and all that stuff. This bike has got some go. Everything got small behind me. Wow. Back there, I revved it up. I had, that was totally unexpected. I didn't expect to do that. But it was about to wheelie. <laughs> Not something that I wanted to do, but it happened by mistake. But I'm kind of happy it happened because now I know what to expect with this bike. Right now, I'm riding in dynamic mode. And uh, I've yet to discover what all the different modes do. So on this bike, it's equipped with uh, the dynamic uh, riding mode, the rain, as well as the road. And I think what that does is just uh, the dynamic one just sharpens the throttle a little bit. And uh, I think uh, each setting increases or decreases the level of traction control and ABS that's applied to the electronics. So currently I'm in dynamic, everything is done for you. Kind of sit back, relax, enjoy the scenery, enjoy the ride. Why the motor, while the motorcycle computer does everything for you. And I kind of like that in a, in a motorcycle like this, I kind of like that because kind of just like, you know, just chill. Enjoy yourself, relax a little bit, not have to worry about so much. There's already enough to think about when you're riding a motorcycle. And the last thing you, you want on your mind is to figure all the stuff out. The dash of this motorcycle is just such a premium looking, feeling design. All the fonts, all the colors, all the graphics are really, really beautiful. Very, very well styled. RPM gauge is very lit up. You can see everything. And it's got passing power in case you want it. Right now I'm in fourth gear, cruising along, but I want to pass these cars. Not a problem. Wide open throttle right here. My Saturday and Sunday commutes, if you want to call them that, cruises I should say, my weekend commutes are typically routes like this. Roads like this are things that I usually enjoy. Nice, calm, peaceful roads, beautiful scenery, gorgeous weather. Stuff like this is what I really enjoy. A motorcycle like this is just an amazing motorcycle to ride in these type of conditions. This motorcycle's got torque for days. Every single gear, every single RPM, it just pulls. It just pulls. There's no dead spots on this motorcycle at all. And I love that, man. And when you rev match it, it sounds nice and throaty. Once again, the dash, it's got all the information I need. And then it's got menus that'll give me additional information, which I find very, very useful, which we're gonna get into, of course. So I got 45 miles, I got 45 miles left until I'm empty. And it's telling me the, the heat of the engine, 184 degrees. Useful information to have, seriously. 73 degree air temperature, it's telling me the time. 
it's showing my phone connectivity it's telling me how many miles per gallon I've done as an average I'm assuming that's average pretty useful information I like this bike I like it a lot and it's saying I got a message who sent me a message what's that about I gotta pull over and check that out that's exciting I like the automatic canceling turn signals left and right cancels by itself I like that I think it goes by the degree of turn so if you're turning and it senses a seven degree or eight degree turn it automatically cancels it for you that could potentially be it I'm assuming for two months we had no traffic and overnight traffic returned so I'm riding in town right now pretty flickable pretty pretty flickable feels light although the bike weighs 465 wet with fuel and everything pretty light pretty 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 light feels it I'm not saying it's light I'm just saying it's it feels pretty light that sounded nice all right so we're low on fuel big yellow box came up with a huge exclamation sign ride to the next filling station I like the fact that it says filling station and not gas station very European I like that I like that a lot all right sir I shall ride to the next filling station cheerio <laughs> assuming I still have like maybe 20 miles left so let's see if I can cancel this baby out oh there it is all right canceled it out all right managed to find the gas station let's fill this baby up at the at the filler as it requested <laughs> per the F 900 R's request I am now at the filler station let's see how much fuel this baby uses and I'm assuming that it's gonna fill up three gallons total assuming that a half a gallon is already in there which gives me about 30 miles 2.2 interesting let's fill it up a little bit more all right so it had a gallon in there a gallon will get me 40 miles 37 miles has no idea that I just filled it up so let's see what happens good ownership experience situations here Aha! it went away so now I have filling up the gas at the filler station experience <laughs> now the only other thing left to do is to go grab some coffee and check it out from an angle from check it out from different angles and see how I feel about owning this bike and taking it to the coffee shops and restaurants and living with a bike on a day-to-day -day basis if I were to buy one second gear right now and it doesn't feel like it's gonna die on me at uh, 2000 rpms in second gear the idle doesn't seem lumpy the, uh, the acceleration doesn't seem lumpy it doesn't feel like it's gonna die and stall out so that's good so riding on a, on a road similar to this and you're doing 22 miles an hour easily in, t in third gear cruising along without any worries bike's not gonna stall out and it's not gonna like it's gonna not gonna feel like it's gonna die on you you try doing this on my single cylinder KTM RC 390 cup bike and when you're in third gear and you're doing 20 miles an hour it wants to gasp for air and die on the spot it takes the bumps like a champ here we are biker hangout panic in one of my favorite places to come to for drinking coffee let's park the bike here and go for a little coffee all right what kind of coffee should we get so many choices oh look at that BMW R9T oh man I rode this bike I test rode this bike I got a review up if you guys haven't checked out that R19 review scrambler I have check it out if this guy's here he's gonna want to talk to me hi can I have a, a small iced coffee with whole milk yeah um, and can I get some water too thank you it's a cool place I come here all the time Apple pay makes life easier thank you I asked for a small this is a small holy macro it looks like a large to me pretty generous in their in their coffee sizes 
let's have a seat over here and admire the beauty that's in front of us over there. Unfortunately, my dudes, this is the time where I get to take off this helmet because otherwise I would not be able to drink. But in front of the motorcycle, let's do a little walk around. So this way you could see me drinking the coffee, kind of. There we go. That's as close as I'll get to it without taking my helmet off. But yeah, it's a pretty beast. I like it, and I like it the fact that the 9T, its brother, is right next to it, along with uh, some Harleys. Pretty cool collection of motorcycles we have here. But I gotta say, this one here is my favorite. Gotta take off this helmet, drink some coffee. And then we're back on the road. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. This looks like a good spot. Well, that was nice. Good coffee, good scenery, beautiful bikes. And returning to the most beautiful one here. And uh, I just wanna conclude this ownership review and uh, talk a little bit more about the bike around town this thing is a charming little bike to ride and it's not little what am i talking about it's a 900 so yeah it's a charming bike to ride i really enjoy it a lot it's beautiful looking it gets a lot of attention it's got tons of power but it could also be a sweetheart around town in second gear it does 20 miles an hour it doesn't feel like it's going to hiccup and stall on you and whenever you want to thrash it around it turns into a bad girl and I like that because in any gear at any time in any RPM range this thing has plenty of go lots and lots of power uh, so at 6,000 RPM all the power all the, uh, the the maximum torque begins at 6,000 RPM but even before that you got lots of low end, uh, low end grunt and torque. So I would definitely buy this bike for myself. Uh, this has been a really good experience. I still have more to do with this bike. I'm going to be reviewing the TFT display, going through the different menu systems and everything. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't watched my review of this motorcycle, make sure to check out the review because it's got a lot of information in there and a lot more than what I talked about. This is simply a ownership review, as if I own this bike, how I feel about it, how does it, go, how does it work around town. And that's basically it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this. Please stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys later. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you soon. Bye-bye.